Hi everyone, here's the Bookemist once again, and today I'm going to recommend Tove Ditlefsen's Copenhagen Trilogy. To all of you who are interested in autofiction, fiction novels blurring the line between autobiography and creativity. And to everybody who's looking for a memoir slash novel of great and immense personal honesty. I must confess, the reason why I know about Ditlefsen's Copenhagen trilogy is because it's been compared to Elena Ferrante's Neapolitan novels, My Brilliant Friend and its sequels, some of the best novels I've read in recent years. And while I was scripting the, uh, the, the content of this video, I had to resist the very strong urge to make some kind of flippant jokes about how this is basically the Neapolitan novels but with pastries instead of pasta. The similarities between the texts are many and fairly clear. They're both stories of young women growing up in poor families in Europe around the middle, broadly speaking, of the 20th century. Young women who want to become writers, have writerly aspirations, but they are confronted by, with the impositions of the, their society at the time, the expectations uh, ascribed to women, uh, the disadvantaged position they had to cope with compared to their male um, peers, and they're both series committed to that great novelistic impulse to connect the inner life of these characters with the lives of their communities, the streets they grew up in, the cities they grew up in, Naples and Copenhagen, respectively. The truth of the matter, though, is that that joke about the pastry and pasta would have stood on very shaky ground. Number one, because the Copenhagen trilogy actually came out decades before the Neapolitan novels. The books that compose it were published originally in Danish between 1969 and 71, if I understand correctly. But also because all of those similarities that I've listed are actually quite superficial. And in fact, the two series are significantly different from one another, and they are parallel stories of similar characters rather than overlapping narratives uh, with much to share at a deeper level. The main difference, I would say, is that the Copenhagen trilogy, possibly because it's the work of a great poet, that Lefsen was a poet, is a very lyrical series, whereas the Neapolitan novels and My Brilliant Friend are always prosaic in the best possible sense. They are concerned with the inner emotional and intellectual turmoil of their characters and with these characters' relations within society, with the clash of characters within these families and these, uh, these streets and these cities as their individual aims, individual goals and desires clash with one another. My Brilliant Friend, as an especially novelistic novel, I would argue, is propelled by pure plot, clearly and deftly unraveled. It moves really fast, and even when the action slows down, say, when the narrative focuses on the inner turmoil of the protagonist, Elena, or Linu, it does so, it focuses on these thoughts through very clear, sharp, crystalline prose. The Copenhagen trilogy, instead, always reads a bit like a poem, in the same way as another memoir um, I read recently, Just Kids by Patti Smith, uh, who, by the way, endorses the Copenhagen trilogy on the cover, also reads like a poem. Its main impulse doesn't seem to be the storytelling impulse, the impulse of conveying an interesting, peculiar story, a clash of characters, an adventure. It seems to be the impulse of revelation, this need to bear to the world the contents of the inner life of the narrator, their emotional struggle, the complexities of their thoughts. Copenhagen is also very lyrical in its language, which has a certain ineffable liquid, almost ethereal quality that I struggle to describe. It's almost as if the story is immersed in a constant fuzzy aura, which doesn't mean that it's unclear. Far from it. Usually when we talk about lyrical prose, um, I, I think of prose that is maybe opaque, difficult, somewhat self-serving. But Ditlefsen, even at her most poetic, 
is always truly engaging, truly relatable, and never loses track of the very human concerns at the heart of this book. If the book reminds me of poetry, it's the most immediate, most accessible poems of William Carlos Williams or Sylvia Plath, rather than the Baroque, uh, complex poems of, say, Wallace Stevens or the Romantic's Flights of Fancy. Perhaps what contributes to that fuzzy aura that I was talking about, that almost foggy quality that I perceived in the writing, is the fact that the emotional temperature in the three novels is, generally speaking, very cold. Dit Lefsen is truly merciless when it comes to dissecting her own relationships with her family and with her partners, with uh, the various men in her life. She bears every secret and doesn't shy away from any uncomfortable truth in all of these relationships, which makes this, this novels, this testimony, truly hard-hitting and truly insightful, as the sa at the same time as it's quite painful. Similar, this, this, simil this very same game um, is evident later into the series, especially in the final novel, Dependency, which analyzes with the same degree of terrible honesty her own addiction to substances and her, her own... Uh, the, the feelings that brought her to a terrible, terrible state of dependency. A book so frank cannot help but being frosty, but what redeems it and what raises the temperature frequently enough to make the reading still stimulating and still rewarding is Ditlefsen astonishing passion for language and for literature. Her wish to become a poet and later on a novelist, to be a writer, is truly luminous throughout the book, and it's almost as if we're reading a double narrative here, one of great emotional commitment and of, of great wonder when it comes to her inner life and the life of her thoughts and her poems and her writing, and one that is much more detached and cold when it comes to exploring her life with the people around her. But with both of these sides, with both of these elements that compose the series, that it, there is much to be gained by experiencing Ditlefsen's world, there is much to be gained for our understanding of personal relationships, for our understanding of our ambitions and our relationships with our own dreams. And overall, books that are this honest always have a lot to contribute to our own understanding of ourselves as humans and of our fellow humans. Overall, the main reason why it's unfair to compare uh, the Copenhagen trilogy to the Neapolitan novels is because they're both great stellar series in their own rights. I will say that if you enjoyed the Neapolitan novels, there's a great chance you'll have um, much to gain from the Copenhagen trilogy, and I would definitely recommend it to anybody who's not scared of a hard-hitting and fairly, frankly, rather depressing novel. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you've read the Copenhagen Trilogy, I really look forward to discussing it with you in the comments. Thank you as always, and bye everybody. <music>